An angel came down from God to say, Mary has a baby on Christmas Day. His name will be Jesus, God's only son, to show that God loves everyone. Mary and Joseph traveled far, far away. When they got to Bethlehem, there was no place to stay. God gave them a stable filled with cows and sheep. Jesus was born, and on her he did sleep. The shepherds were watching their sheep at night. An angel came and caused a great fright. Don't be afraid, I have the good news. Jesus is born for you and you and you. The angel said, the shepherds ran to see the baby God sent to man. It was the best news they had ever heard. They hurried off to spread the word. The wise men came following a special star. All the way to Jesus, they came from afar. They knocked on his door, then knelt on the floor. And worshiped the one he offered the door. They gave their gifts to the little boy, and everyone's heart was filled with joy. Jesus is God's only son, the greatest gift for everyone.
everybody. You can be seated just for a moment. Welcome to Life Point Christian Church. If you're here for the first time, my name is Phil. I'm the lead pastor here, and I am so thrilled to see you here this evening. I'm thrilled to see some new faces. Thank you for joining us. If you're here for the very first time, we would love it if you would just take a moment and just give us a little bit of information on this connection card, just so that we can stay in touch with you about what's happening at our church. After the service, you can drop this into one of the offering boxes on the way out of this room, and there's one on the way out of the building. And we're also glad to welcome a bunch of online viewers right now, viewing from all over the country. Thank you for watching, and Merry Christmas to you. If you would just let us know where you're watching from in the comments, we would appreciate that as well. Now, we don't have a service tomorrow morning. Let me repeat that. We do not have a service tomorrow morning. Please do not show up tomorrow morning. Enjoy Christmas with your family. Um, if you would like to support Life Point Christian Church, you can do that. It's very easy. You can put a check or cash into one of the offering boxes on your way out of the building, or you can simply take out your mobile phone and text any amount to the number 84321, and then follow the prompts, and we appreciate your support. Do me a favor, if you would. Let's stand back up. And we just want to invite God to be a part of this Christmas celebration. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of your Son. We can't celebrate Christmas without Christ. And we are grateful for all of the things, all of the blessings that you've given to this church family and to those who are here in this room and those that are watching. And our only request now, Lord, is that we turn and give all of the praise and glory back to you because you are worthy of it. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and all God's children said, amen. 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 Church, let's continue to worship Jesus tonight.
Well, good evening. You may have a seat. My name is Matt Clark. I'm the family pastor here, and I would like to invite all the kids up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a story. So if you are fifth grade and below, uh, we would love for you to come up here and join us on stage. Come on up. Mrs. Clark will be up here as well. And you get to come right on the stage right here. Yeah, come on. Shove those kids up here. You guys have a seat right here. So I'm going to show you this book. Oh, man. Oh, you got an elf? That is so cool. <gasps> yeah. Oh, man, you guys look great. There's a mix between Christmas and PJs. This is awesome. I should have worn my PJs, too. All right. Well, I've got a story here that I would love to read to you. Is that all right? So this is the Twas the Evening of Christmas, written by Glennis Nellist, illustrated by Elena Selivanova. Ready? Twas the evening of Christmas when all through the town, every inn was so crowded, no room could be found. Tired Mary and Joseph, who went door to door, at last found a place on a small stable floor. Thank goodness, said Mary, who tiptoed inside. The mice saw the donkey and scurried to hide. The rest of the creatures all cuddled up tight in hopes that they might have a calm, peaceful night. The pigeons were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of breadcrumbs danced in their heads. The cows closed their eyes and the oxen lay down. The do doves cooed so gently, the lambs made no sound. The moon through the trees was just starting to glow with a glimmer of light on the stable below. When quite by surprise came a newborn baby's cry that woke all the animals sleeping nearby. Up jumped the cows and the oxen and sheep. Up popped the pigeons aroused from their sleep. They all came to gaze at the small baby boy as his mama and papa hugged him with joy. Now donkeys, now cows, now pigeons and sheep, now oxen and mice in the manger did peep. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples so sweet as they nuzzled his fingers and cute little feet. Out in the fields, taking care of their sheep, some shepherds were just getting ready to sleep, when all of a the sudden they had such a fright as a whole choir of angels lit up the night. But the song of the angels, the words that they said, soon let the men know they had nothing to dread. Dear shepherds, it's wonderful news that we bring. A Savior is born. He is Jesus, the King. They ran to the stable, peeked through the door, and saw something never imagined before. There in a manger, a baby boy lay. No blankets, no pillow. His bed made of hay. Ooh. And to that small stable came three splendid kings with gifts for the baby, all beautiful things. They jumped from their camels and knelt at his feet with their frankincense gold and myrrh that smelled sweet. The stable was filled with wonderful light as stars above Bethlehem twinkled so bright. And high in the heavens, God whispered, my son, you'll bring hope to the world and love everyone. Then back to their slumbers, the animals curled, amazed at this babe who had entered their world. As Mary and Joseph got ready for bed, they snuggled their baby and kissed his sweet head. As Mary laid Jesus asleep in the hay, she thought about all that had happened that day. The mice heard her whisper as she tucked him in tight. Merry Christmas, my son, 
and to all a good night. Did you like that story? You guys were so awesome. Not even a peep. You guys did great. You know what? You get to get a gift bag before you leave. And parents, uh, kids are allowed to stay in here during the service. This is a family service. Uh, however, the uh, uh, rooms four years and under are open. So anybody K-5 would stay in here. But anybody four and under can go into the classrooms or they can stay in here. So why don't you guys go over to Mrs. Clark and grab a goodie bag. Thank you guys. Give them a hand. Well, while they're gathering their goodie bags there, I wanted to share with you briefly, uh, for the family ministry, if you don't have a bulletin, please grab one before you leave. We have, uh, we are about uh, shared family experiences here with mom, dad, kids. And so we have a Building Strong Families with all the events from our daddy-daughter dance that we hold here to our family camp where the entire family goes. And then we have stuff for teenagers as well. So we would love for you to take these and gather this information so that you can come back and join us at another time. We come to the time of communion uh, during the service. And so this is a time where we remember what Christ has done for us. The fact that he died for us and then he resurrected. And so in a moment, if you haven't done so already, for those of you who are online and those of you who are in the building here... We have a little communion kit uh, that we have. If you didn't pick one up at the door, uh, feel free to raise your hand. And there's, there's some, uh, actually my mother and father will hand you some. They've, they're back here. They'll hand you some kits. If you haven't, just sneak your hand up and they'll give you that. Because what we do every week is we gather together and we celebrate communion together as a family. And we partake uh, with the bread and the juice. So in... In keeping with the story, I decided to write a communion poem. No, <laughs> sorry, for those who know me, they said, oh no, but no. Twas the night before Passover and all through the street. The disciples were planning for everyone to meet. Jesus had planned the meal in advance. To the disciples' surprise, it was not even by chance. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, reflecting on pain that was to happen ahead. He then took the cup, the disciples unaware of the burden of sin that he would soon bear. The Lord's Supper today is a reflection for all time for the sin that we commit, both yours and of mine. So gather we must in this world and within to remember the Christ who died for our sin. And that's what we do on a regular basis. We gather together to remember what Christ has done. And we do that through these elements. This is made for all those who believe in what Christ has done for them. So if you'll peel back the layers here, you'll find the piece of bread at the very top. And that's what we're going to take. And this, this bread is what Jesus sat around the table with his disciples. And he had supper with them. And he said, Jesus said, this is my body. And it, it, it's broken for you. Take and eat. And then there's another layer there of juice. And as you peel that back, he said this, this is the blood that was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus the baby who came to this earth to, to, to be with us, to be human, to walk amongst us, to gather children. God, we thank you for that gift that you have given us. And most importantly, we thank you for the fact that he died for our sins and resurrected again. Thank you, Jesus, for taking our sin as a burden on your shoulders. Amen. I wonder what it
it would be like to be born in a manger. Yeah. Wonder what ever happened to baby Jesus. He grew up. What? Wait. So you're saying that the baby Jesus Christmas story is the same as the adult walk on water Jesus? Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, I just never really put the two concepts together. Wonder what happened to that guy, huh? <laughs> he, he went to the cross. That's the same guy? So what you're saying is baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus? Yeah. I mean, there's some time in there, right? I mean, he, he grew up, he taught people, he lived a perfect life. He died on the cross and came back to life. And, you know, now he lives in our hearts. That's the same guy? The Jesus that lives in our hearts? Okay, I was really, oh, wow. Okay, I never really put all those guys together, you know? Only one guy. I'll tell you this, here's an idea. Maybe we stop just making Christmas all just this once a year isolated thing, but we make an ongoing story about the salvation in our hearts and lives. That's the idea. Merry Christmas again. So, so glad to, uh, to see this room full, and I'm so glad that you guys are with us this evening. Um, I thought that I would do something special this evening because I have a sense that in this room there are a few people who still need to do some Christmas shopping. Don't raise your hands, but how many of you are sort of like, yeah, I, there's a few things I still need to get. It is Christmas Eve, but I want to help you out. I want to take you to a place where uh, it's not Amazon. They're not going to deliver on time anymore. It's not Target. It's not Walmart. Um, and here's what's great about it. Everything here is basically free. Everything's always in stock, and some of the things last forever. And the selection's amazing. What I want to do is take you to the Bible, which has some great last-minute gift ideas. So let's go shopping this evening. We'll start down the aisle of Ephesians and look at chapter 4, verse 32. And it says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted." Forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. You can pick up right now, today, on sale, the gift of forgiveness. And the gift of forgiveness is great. I'm going to tell you why. Three reasons. Number one, everybody needs the gift of forgiveness. Amen? Amen. Raise your hand if you've received the gift of forgiveness. Everyone needs it. It's also good because it does as much good for the person who gives the gift as the person who receives the gift. Great quote from Lewis Smeeds, and you're going to want to write this down or take a picture. He says, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. The other reason why forgiveness is such a great gift, are you ready for this, is it's totally okay to re-gift it. You can give forgiveness over and over and over again. When the disciples went to Jesus and they asked him how many times they would be able to re-gift forgiveness, Peter said, can we re-gift it seven times? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. Let me ask you this. This Christmas Eve, is there somebody that you need to give the gift of forgiveness to? Somebody in your family, maybe. 
Maybe a friend. Maybe somebody in church. Maybe you're in a situation where you've gathered for Christmas and you've brought the family together and it's a little bit weird because there's that thing that's in between you and that other person and the only thing standing in between you and just a clear conscience is forgiveness. Let me make this suggestion. Go ahead and add forgiveness to your cart right now. Because it's available for you to give away. Now know this. Forgiveness doesn't always equal 100% reconciliation. Sometimes the consequences of our actions do create some space, but you can be free of that burden. So, might you give the gift of forgiveness to someone this Christmas? Now, let me talk to all of the individuals in this room under the age of 18. If you're under 18, will you raise your hand? Under 18, raise your hand up high. Up high so I can see. Okay, a bunch of people. I'm going to talk to you. Have you guys got all your shopping done for your moms and dads yet? Yeah. Yes, you've got everything. Is there anybody that still needs to get something? Okay, don't admit it. I understand. But I want to give you a great gift idea for this Christmas. It's the gift of obedience. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Now, kids, let's, let's admit it. It's easier to obey your parents around Christmas time, isn't it? Because if you do good, then maybe you'll get the present that you wanted. But, do you know why it's important for you to obey your parents? Is it because your parents are always right? No, they aren't. Is it because your parents love you? Well, they do. Is it because your parents want what's best for you? Well, they do that as well. No, the reason why, kids, it's important for you to obey your parents is because it pleases God. It's one of the Ten Commandments. God says to honor your father and your mother. So, young people, listen up. If you've still got a little Christmas shopping to do, can I suggest that you add the gift of obedience to your cart? It doesn't cost anything, and I promise you, your parents will think it's the best gift. Way better than that tie you always give your dad. Let's, let's change pace now. We're going to go down the Galatians aisle. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Here's what it says. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. What's Paul writing? He's saying you're free spiritually, but don't use that freedom as an opportunity just to serve yourself. Use that freedom that you have as an opportunity to serve other people and to do it humbly. We call this the gift of service. Christmas time is a great time to give. I mean, because we just naturally focus on other people, we focus on ourselves less, and that's a good thing. But I want you to think about the gift of service in several ways. For example, who can you serve here at church? Maybe there's an opportunity for you to serve in a ministry. Maybe it's the children's ministry. Maybe it's the music ministry. Maybe it's the tech ministry or the hospitality ministry. There's a lot of places to serve at church. You can give the gift of service there. How about our community? Especially at Christmas time, there's opportunities to serve in the community, to do some good in our community. But you don't have to serve in the church, and you don't have to serve in the community. You can serve at home. Husbands, let me talk to you for a second. Husbands, you can give the gift of service to your families, to your kids and to your wives. Maybe you can take an extra shift on the dishes. Maybe you can take care of some of those things around the house that have needed to be done. Wives, the same for you. Maybe you can do some things for your family that you don't normally do. That's a gift of service. Kids, maybe you can do something for your brother or your sister. Maybe you can help them clean their room or you could help them do their homework. 
Or if you're an older brother or an older sister, maybe you can play with your younger siblings. That's a gift. It's the gift of service. Serving is simply putting the needs of others ahead of your own. It's asking, what can I do for you that would honor you and bless you? So, if you're still looking for a few more gifts, maybe for your brothers, your sisters, moms, dads, maybe somebody here in the church community, let me suggest that you add, in addition to the gift of forgiveness, the gift of obedience, add the gift of service to your cart. Here's the last gift idea that I want to suggest to you. It's the gift of your presence. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, it says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. In the original language, bear means to take up with your hands. You know, Christmas is a time when many people are lonely. Christmas is a time that highlights for somebody the isolation that they feel normally. It's a heightened time where they realize, I really am alone. Or for some people, they may have lost one of their loved ones this year, and it reminds them that they're hurting. Christmas is a time when you can give the gift of your presence, when you can be there for somebody else who's hurting. Now, some of you think, okay, that's hard for me to do. I don't know what to say. Well, the gift of your presence isn't saying anything. It's being there for someone else. You know, most of these gifts don't cost anything at all. This one has a little bit of a price. It's the price of your time. And for a lot of us, that's the most expensive thing that we have. But let me make a suggestion to you. You can give the gift of your presence this year and throughout all of the year by spending some time with somebody who's elderly, somebody who's alone, somebody who doesn't have anybody to talk to, somebody who struggles to make friends. You can volunteer at organizations like Embrace Families, one of the organizations that we work with. You can be a mentor to a foster kid. Parents, here's one that you can add to your list. You know, I'm pretty sure that even though your kids want that new game console or that new video system or that new phone, what they would really, really love and cherish is the gift of your presence being with them. Kids, I think it's the same for your parents. They love the different gifts that you give them, but I bet you they would love to spend time with you. So I hope you were able to put a few more items into your cart, maybe come up with some gifts that are perfect for that hard-to-buy family member, the hard-to-buy-for family member or friend. Now, I know what some of you are saying. That's a lot. I don't know if I could do that. I, I can't. The forgiveness is difficult for me. Obedience, I struggle with that. Serving others, well, that's hard for me. Nobody can be all of those things. Nobody can be forgiving and obedient and serve. Well, I know someone who can and did. He's the very reason we celebrate Christmas. Actually, his name is in the word Christmas. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus was present. The Bible says in the book of John that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He became human. So that he could experience everything that we face in our lives. All of the pain, all of the suffering, the abuse, the loneliness, and the rejection. He was present in our world. So that he could identify with us. We have a savior who knows what it's like to be human. He also came to serve. It was his very mission. When asked about his mission, he said, I am here to seek and to save the lost. His service was to offer himself as the very sacrifice that you needed. And thirdly, Jesus was obedient to the will of God. Philippians chapter 2 says, In being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. You know, as much as we like to celebrate Christmas by remembering Jesus as a baby and by focusing on the manger and the wise men and the stables and the shepherds and, and we enjoy the presents and the songs and the lights and the man in the red suit. The truth is Christmas means nothing without 
the cross. As a matter of fact, if you look at the word Christmas carefully, there's a cross right in the middle of it. It's important to remember that the child we celebrate this year became a man. He lived a life of service and obedience to God's will. He was fully man and fully God and he allowed himself to become the last sacrifice for sin. And his death on the cross was torturous and agonizing. As a matter of fact, they had to create a word for it and so they invented a word. It's the word excruciating. It comes from the Latin word for crucifixion. The Bible says they put nails into his hands and nails into his feet. And that blood poured from his broken body. And the purpose of that blood is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 where it says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sin. And that's the real story of Christmas. That you can be forgiven. That you can have a clean slate before God. Think of it. All of the actions you regret. All of the words you wish you could unsay. All of the thoughts you wish you could unthink. All can be forgiven forever. So let me ask you. Are you ready to turn from your old way of life and follow Jesus? Why don't you add one more thing to your shopping cart if you haven't already? Something for yourself. Forgiveness from Jesus Christ. That would be a tremendous Christmas gift to unwrap. You could accept the greatest gift for eternity. A new life with Christ this Christmas. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, this Christmas we want to focus on not just the parts of the story that make us feel warm and fuzzy, but the parts of the story that engage our need to be forgiven from you. Knowing that the purpose of Christmas from the beginning was to allow your Son to save us and to deliver us from darkness into light. Lord, we're grateful for that light. We're grateful that the darkness has not overcome it. And we're grateful for the light of the world, Jesus, that we have in our lives. And I pray for anybody this evening who hasn't yet decided to follow Jesus, hasn't yet decided to acknowledge not just the baby Jesus, but the grown man Jesus who died on the cross and was raised to new life. That this would be the year that they would follow him. Lord, we are grateful for all of the things that you do for us in our lives and have done, especially the gift of salvation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Each of you should have a candle. And we're going to have a, a candlelight ceremony with a, a song that we'll sing together. A couple of things just to let you know. I'm going to light this candle and I'm going to pass it forward. And just have your candles lit by the people around you. It will work to the way back. Don't light your candle on your own. Um, if you have children, it's okay if they have a candle. Just be careful. Kind of supervise them uh, if possible. This light represents the light that Jesus brought into this dark world. It's up to us to spread that light.
Church, let's stand and sing this together. First verse again, just the voices. your candles. Thank you for being with us this evening. We hope that you have a very Merry Christmas. God bless you. Go ahead and return your candles on the way out, and we'll see you next Sunday, January 1st. God bless.